Hey guys, what's up, it's your detective here, investigating your favorite albums, and today I am very sleep deprived, but also I'm going to be doing my second review of the day, the first review is in Cantonese. I'm going to be doing an album review on the new World End Girlfriend album, Resistance and the Blessing. So, uh, World End Girlfriend is a Japanese uh, electronic post-rock musical producer guy and he's been making music since the early 2000s so he's definitely not a newcomer he showed up out of nowhere and with this album i didn't even know of him until lately when i saw this album climbing the charts on rate your music i listened to it a little bit i thought it was pretty interesting and i planned to do a review of this album on a mini albums review video until I found out that this album is 2 hours and 25 minutes long. And it's way more interesting than it should be. And essentially this album mixes electronic, glitch, post-rock, modern classical, sound collage, and literally every genre in existence and packed into one gigantic two and a half hour long epic album. So yeah, this is a really weird and interesting album and definitely one of the most interesting listens I've had all year long. The album opener, Unprologue, Birthday Resistance, starts off with, uh, it's a really creepy opening with distant howls, some reversed Japanese spoken word, and then it clashes into this really bright, dense, otherworldly noise. Then we have Reincarnation number 9, Fire Walk With Me, which is like one of those creepy horrorcore J-pop tunes with icy chilled keyboards, but then we have uh, vocal samples with disembodying effects, bass guitars, I feel like I'm listening to a Polyphia track or something, and then glitchy drums all at, all at the same time. It's really surreal. I've never heard this combination of sounds before on a track together. It's really weird. Other highlights include Meguri, where the opening strings uh, was literally straight out of the theme song to In the Mood for Love, which is hilarious, but then it's totally something different. It is essentially a nine and a half minute long horrorcore circus with loads of strings, but then the organic strings is paired against electronic sounding banging percussions, so all these strings and these drums are clashing with each other and it just sounds really weird. It's like I'm having a migraine or something. I also like the track Eve, which has the deconstructed breakbeats at the end of the track, paired with really sad, dreamy strings in the back. It sounds like a robot trying to communicate with an alien, except both of them are depressed as fuck. And again, it just sounds really interesting. Orphan Angel is one of the shorter tracks on the album, and I feel like I'm being glitched out of existence while I'm listening to it. And then we hit the second half of the album where the tracks become a lot less interesting. There are a lot of shorter tracks in the second half. A lot of the shorter tracks are very experimental, usually glitch, uh, usually dark ambient, usually just some sort of sound collage, maybe spoken word, something light, something weird, something sample heavy. But uh, most of the dark ambient tracks, in my opinion, work really well, really able to create a creepy, off-kilter sense of atmosphere, while at the same time, you can sort of tell that that's not exactly the goal of the artist, which makes those tracks sound even weirder. And then we have the tracks like Mobius, one of my, one of my favorites on the album. It starts off with weird, off-kilter, what it seems to be banjos and then it transitions to intimate Japanese spoken word and the second half randomly changes course to some solemn organs and rain sounds it's very goth and it's all packed in three and a half minutes for some reason then we have tracks like Himitsu which is a pretty straightforward post-rock song with a touch of shoegaze it's really sad and intimate and breathy and emotional definitely a really interesting one then there are multiple tracks on this album that sort of sample classic, classical pieces, but it's not like uh, there are very, you know, a very, very niche pieces or anything. These are tracks that literally everyone and their moms know, but yet for some reason the guy has to crush it, clash it, mix it, mash it into weird electronic excursions like Odd Joy, which samples Beethoven's Ode to Joy or Ave Maria, which 
is pretty self-explanatory. These are very interesting examples and very fascinating clashes between organic and electronic. Then we have Blue Zero Nine, which is a very twisted art pop track with ghostly vocals. I don't know what to make of it. In one breath, it sounds really cool and interesting. In another breath, it also feels like a half-baked song idea. Then we have Black Box Fatal Fate Part 2, which samples these electronic sounds. That sounds like it came out of a video game. Sounds like guns and and, and bullets, but but they're a little bit too distorted and, and mixed up to actually sound like anything. And then Godless Altar samples blast beats from a death metal track but nothing else so it just a beat just came out of nowhere so this is definitely a very interesting album there's so many genres packed into this thing like there is like every genre ever aside from hip-hop and maybe country and like soul or something but like everything else is just somehow turn up in this album in one breath there are too many things going on in this album i feel like if this album is one hour long I would have freaking loved it but there are indeed a lot of very interesting moments of dark ambient and and weird organic electronic mashes that really really feel otherworldly so very interesting i highly recommend this one check it out i'm giving this new album from world and girlfriend a strong 7 out of 10 so have you listened to this album comments below let me know subscribe if you want more thanks for watching i gotta go to work bye bye